As a kid, I watched Star Trek, and I really believed that the year 2000 was the future. If I walk down the street today, I'm disappointed that almost nothing has changed. What happened? About 100 years ago, our report said if I would have asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Today, we're still building the car he came up with, and although we've optimized every part, every process, and made it much better, nothing has changed. Mobility is one of the big challenges we need to solve, and it seems that we're stuck with this car. No one is looking to the bigger picture. I'm trying to imagine what we would have done without Henri's invention. It looks like we're still riding horses. Maybe because it looks like we hold on to things very hard, and I'm pretty sure sending them to Mars was never the intention. Even there, nothing has changed. And of course, we're currently in a big transformation. Everything is changing. Every day we hear and read that the world has become more uncertain and complex. And indeed, the current revolution has resulted in hyperconnectivity, and individual empowerment has changed the rules of the game completely. Businesses are empowered to produce and compete globally, while individuals all over the world can interact and consume from practically any location in the world. In a few years, the self-driving car, augmented reality, virtual reality, 3D printing, and many more will introduce us in an era where basically everything may be different. When it comes to innovation, I don't see a revolutionary spirit in most cases either. Too many companies stick to the old rules, and there are many reasons for that. Going from uh, traditional outsourcing practices to fear of copycats. But when everything changes, we won't find solutions in normal processes, existing frameworks, and typical assumptions. And sure, there are some outstanding products and services on the market, but there's also quite a lot of, let's be honest, junk. Now, it used to be simple. There was an industry with some competitors which together created rules. The business and progress was assured. In terms of innovation, this meant that we, as our competitors, added an extra feature to our products every year. It was easy. But now, our washing machine finally has 100 different programs. What's next? Or even worse, there's Skype. Uh, telecom operators considered, and maybe even consider, their infrastructure as being the main thing, their most important asset. All of a sudden, there was Skype offering voice over IP calls without any infrastructure. They're a software company. Circuses were convinced it was about uh, budget-friendly rates, uh, star performance, and animal acts, until Cirque du Soleil came along with, with no uh, animals, no stars, but beautifully choreographed shows, sophisticated sound systems. And iTunes, Airbnb, Uber, all of them disrupted the complete industry in a few days. Our current old-school innovation approach is not able to tackle these kinds of questions. Today, creating and launching meaningful products and services in our connected world requires a radical transformation. So you need, to, you need to get in innovation mode because your executive committee wants your R&D team to come up with the next big thing. Now, how do you discover what next, uh, next big thing is right for your company? That's the million dollar question. The natural first step is to brainstorm and create ideas. I believe that innovation puts way too much uh, emphasis on ideation. Ideation is considered the most important step in the innovation process, and often it is the only step. This is not the answer. Relying solely on ideation will not result in the next big thing. So a one-day workshop in the R&D department won't help us. I strongly believe that we have to start looking at innovation from another point of view. It's not longer about improving, which is still the case for some of our products and services, but it's also about reinventing our business, and maybe more important, reinventing ourselves. 
It has to become the main driver in our daily activities and needs to be supported and influenced by the whole organization. Now, in Buddhism, there's a saying, you have to define your target well, but once you did, you have to forget and focus on the journey. We have to start investigating the future. We have to start investigating customer needs, and we have to start looking at ourselves. The process of creating a vision on the future, redefining our future mission, and identifying customer needs will automatically lead us to new solutions. Start asking, what if? We have to start from the insights and scenarios and create a continuous loop of creating new concepts, validating them, gathering new knowledge, and making a decision whether to continue with the concept, to create a variation, or to quit it. And don't consider creation, validation, learning, and decision-making as distinct steps. It's a natural process which runs by itself, trial and error, and gives us uh, concrete answers on abstract hypotheses, which pushes our ID step by step, taking the smallest step we can take today. You can travel the path until you have become the path itself. It's all about learning, not learning in the sense of reading, listening, or watching. It's about experimenting. In a typical approach, learning, thinking, and doing happen in a sequence, one after the other. The doing part only starts after there is a clear goal. In design, learning, and think learning thinking, and doing happen together. And the goal, well, that's a moving target. This makes some people uncomfortable, since it's not considered a good management practice. We typically experience some ups and downs. In the beginning, we ask everyone to be open and as creative as possible. First design research delivers us some neat insights. We come up with new and crazy ideas. The status quo is challenged. Everybody is excited. People feel liberated from the corporate constraints. It looks good. We start to iterate, and that's when DOS comes in. We hear all kinds of backlash. The ideas no longer seem feasible. It will be hard to change things. At this moment, we need to be very convincing. Proposed solutions will have a company-wide effect. Some execs don't buy it. Sure, there are a bunch of great ideas, but where is this all leading to? We need to start over, rethink our original decisions, chew on the problem again, and accept the fact that we will underdeliver at some points. Finally, a vision emerges. But it takes faith, even for experienced creative types, that in the end, something good will come. Understanding change will give us choice. It's important to stay in problem space in order to come up with more and better ideas. We have the tendency to be very proud of our great idea. But we shouldn't. We should ask, we should question our ID. Question why it's not good enough. Look for more IDs and for better IDs. We need to stay asking why in order to, to assure we will over-deliver. Is anyone familiar with Pachinko? It's the Japanese variation of what we call the pinball machine. Now, when we used to play pinball, you got three balls, which you had to play carefully in the right hole, and when you push too hard, tilt, game over. Pachinko, Japanese people, contrary, they shoot a lot of balls at the same time, because they know at least some of them will end up in the right hole. I think this illustrates the need for many ideas, and more important, giving more ideas a chance. Ideas are hypotheses which should not be killed until proven wrong. The question now is to narrow down the list. How do we eliminate irrelevant issues? And therefore, we have to look in the mirror. Where is the company willing to go? What is the future mission? What do you want? Understanding this will help determine which challenges are relevant to the company and the future customers. Values, it's all about values. 
it's, it's all about values, our purpose, our identity, and our culture. Values are fundamental beliefs held by individuals and organizations. They help people to determine whether they are following the right track in order to reach their goals. Values drive behavior. Behavior drives the journey. The journey determines your destination. It's all about creating a creative culture in which we constantly search, learn, and evolve. And of course, we made a lot of assumptions, and we still have to face uncertainty. There are many possible futures. So if we can predict the future, and we can forecast the future, then how should we go about it? Well, there's a nuance here. Instead of predicting the future, we should prepare ourselves for the future. It's not a matter of being right, but being ready. Investigating a range of possible futures, understanding the relevant trends, and asking those important what-if questions. Therefore, question your beliefs, and let's create what kills you instead of being killed. Design is definitely more of an art than a science. With so many variables, there isn't really a scientific way to know whether your solution is the best solution. Now, in mathematics, there's a concept called the local optimum. This is a solution that is better than the neighboring solution, but it doesn't guarantee that it's the overall best solution. Got it? Let me visualize. You're standing at the Signal de Botranche, the highest point in Belgium, a frightening 694 meters of sea level. If you go there, there's not any other higher point around. So if you don't know any better, you may think you're on top of the world. But travel a little bit more to the south, and you will find thousands of higher mountains. And if you have enough time and budget, you may even find yourself on the Mount Everest. So the point that I want to make, excellent design is not achieved by being satisfied with a local optimum. Excellent design is achieved with blood, tears, sweat, plain, hard work. Work on the details, but keep the big picture in mind. Sweat over desirability. Is this really the best solution? Feasibility. Are we able to deliver? Viability. Is it profitable? And anything else on the list. And at some point, all the pieces will fall together only then is your design good enough. The journey to every destination starts with a small step. If you take that step and the following steps right, then you will reach your destination sooner than later. We have to enjoy the journey and embrace all the hardships and rewards we encounter during the process as a learning curve. We have to forget the illusion of control in order to control. Thank you.